Good. It's hitting the right spot. This is what I needed. Hello, and welcome to Dinner Views. I'm Matthew Francis, and this is the show where I get to cook a dream dinner for my fascinating friends here in Hollywood, and then interview them about their life, their career, and their points of view on the world. Today, my guest is one of those people that you can't help but love. He's had a whole career before he kind of grew to popularity on BuzzFeed and Paralike, but since then, he's done hilarious videos where he tries crazy different challenges and experiences, and he always can do a sketch like nobody else, and he always makes me smile. So please welcome Gadio. Woo! Damn, that was good. You know, I tried. That I was tried. so good. I was you like, know. Me? Thank you, buddy. Of Thank course. you for having me. I'm, yeah. I'm excited to be here, and I'm here. I'm uh, super excited to support you and your channel. Make sure you guys keep supporting Matthew. Like, this dude is the real deal. Okay? Yes. Thank you. Yeah. And what's nice is, so we have a lot of people in this room. It's myself, Gadiel, yeah. his sister, Andy, as well as my good friend, Cohen. And because there's all those people and lights and food and ovens, it's very hot in here. So we actually have a fan running. So if you, if you hear that, we apologize. Um, okay. So, Gadiel, I kind of gave like a little bit of like a career little yeah. introduction to you, but there's a lot that people may not know about your personal life. So can oh. you give me, before we kind of get into the whole interview, just give me like a little abridged life story okay. of Gadiel. How would you get from like childhood to here? All right. Uh, damn. That's a, that's a long <laughs> they're, one. They're always shocked. I, when I was born, I was born in New York City, Harlem Hospital. It was snowing that day. I am with you. I ain't gonna go all the way back. No, I, I was born and raised in New York. I'm from Harlem. Um, at, at that time, I was working for GNC selling vitamins and stuff like that. Oh. But I lived in a dangerous neighborhood. Mm. So even though I worked for GNC and sold vitamins, people always try to get me to do things that I, w I didn't ever want to be a part of. So I was like, I'm going to get out of here. So I joined the Navy. Yes. So I remember I, re I remember there was a dude that was like, yo, I found out who killed my dad. He was like, I want you to take care of it. I was like, no, I can't do that. I could give you vitamin C. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and then, no, I joined the Navy. Uh, I was aircraft director for uh, four and a half years. Wow. You know, I did a couple of tours. I was part of war in Iraq and Afghanistan. Uh, so I, I launched aircrafts, uh, F-18s from the aircraft carrier. Okay. Well, I, you have to explain what that is to me. I don't even know what that is. That, is that like the actual, like... The biggest boat, like the biggest oh, ship. Shit. Like, okay. yeah. Wow. Impressive. Have, yeah, that was amazing. Yeah, and you got my military shit on. Right? Oh, yeah. No, I didn't. This is Sara. Oh. <laughs> this is Sara. <laughs> he was once function and heroic. Now he's just fashion. Yeah, he's just sad. <laughs> After I left the Navy, I started doing stand-up. Yes. And when I was doing stand-up, my ex-girlfriend was like, yo, you're funny. You should do videos online. That's what new comedians do. Mm. And I'm like, mommy, you right. I'm funny. <laughs> right? And I started doing my own videos yeah. online. And uh, BuzzFeed found out about me. And they're like, come on, you know, we want you to work for us. And mm -hmm. then that's how come I got hired and I ended up in Pedal Light. And how long ago was that? That was three years ago. Damn. Three years ago. Has so it gone by fast for you? It's bound, it's, yeah. yeah. It, it goes so fast. Yeah. The days go so fast. You would I was 18 last year. Can you believe that? That just means you're living your life well, Gaudio. That's fun. Oh. It's oh. busy, right? Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Let's tell them your life story. Okay, well, basically, okay, so went to culinary school. Okay. Um, worked in restaurants. I made same kind of thing. Like I was, I was loved video, and I loved the I kind of like performing. So yeah. I made food videos while I was in college. Uh -huh. And BuzzFeed saw those, and they reached out and said, "Hey, like we have a new food brand called Tasty. Do you uh -huh. want to like work for us? Um, send an application." And I did, uh -huh. and then I graduated and started as an intern. I a little background uh, about Matt and I. Yes. Uh, you know, you did uh, a video for Haiti mm -hmm. at that time. And we, Julissa and I found out about it, yeah. and there was something, uh, Dominican Independence Day was coming around the corner. Yeah. And Matt, you were the only person in Tasty that was trying out a new format, especially celebrating hi other history. So, yeah. you know, I want to thank you for doing that, but he was the only one that stepped out of the box of just doing hand, uh, 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 what is it? Top down? Yeah, top down, like hands and pans video. Hands yeah. and pans. So you wanted to add more character to it. You want to add yes. more theme, more, and you also want to add people of color too. Yeah. So it, we uh, thank you for that. Yeah. You know I, mean? I mean, well, and thank you guys because honestly, like we, you know, we couldn't do it by ourselves. We only had so many people of color that were tasty producers. Yeah. And we just wanted. We knew, we knew we had so many talented people on our team and at BuzzFeed that really had so many good stories to tell. Yeah. And so we were like, well, Jalisa and Gadiel are not only are they Dominican and have a lot of personal history to share, they're also just like. 
bunch of fun. Thank you, so thank we you. knew that like if we put you do both in a video, it would do well and it'd be great. And yeah, that was um, Mongo con los tres golpes. Yeah. And you can look at it now <laughs> anywhere. Yeah. And yeah. It's, it's a blast. Yeah, I think, I think uh, it did like over 13 million views or something. Yeah, right? on Facebook, it, it was like ended up being over like 20 million views. And on YouTube, it's like almost near a million now, I think. And thank all, you for representing us, yo. You a real one, son. You know what? I try. And also, that recipe is really good it's from their families. Yeah. You have to make it. Uh, yeah, yeah. Especially, you know. Because I was part of it. Especially the salami, right? The salami, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, Okay, so now, so before we kind of get into any more food stuff, we have um, a game, okay? So I think a really great way to get to know someone is through, like, their types of food they enjoy, okay? Okay. And I know you love, like, competition and trying to win. Yeah, yeah. So this game... Julissa and I are like that. We just compete versus each other, you know? That's my home homie. I love that girl. Miss her. Uh, um, you're gonna like hearing this because she's currently the reigning champ of this game. Oh no way! Yeah, so basically, I'm not it, surprised. Yeah, it's called <laughs> it's called fast food favorites. Okay. And you have to like, basically grab one of the names and read it off. So spice, and you like tell me what your favorite spice is. Okay. Right. So like, let's say like I don't know pepper, and then you would like do all of them, and you'd keep going, and your goal is to get as many as you can in one minute. Julissa has 24. That's like the best so far. Wow. And let's say if I, let's say if I say spice, I could say like adobo. Yes. Perfect. I'm gonna mix these up. I'm gonna put a minute on the clock, okay? And this, your goal is to beat every other guest here, okay? Yeah. That's your goal. That's right, son. Let me zen. Mm. Are you ready? I'm ready when you are. Three, two, one, go. Leg 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 Legumes, like some kind of bean or lentil. What's your favorite bean or lentil? Oh, uh, black beans. There you go. Burger topping, uh, bacon. Nice, Damn, nice. I'm slow. <laughs> Junk food, McDonald's. Meat, biste, which is um, yep, steak. Nut, uh, nut. I don't like any nuts. Uh, we go get it. <laughs> what cashews? Very oh, yeah. cashews, great choice. Cheese, Dominican cheese. Oh. Fruit, plátano. I think it's a fruit. Mm -hmm. It is a fruit. Yeah. Last supper, uh, oxtail. I did have oxtail. I'm gonna be honest. <laughs> Seafood. Uh, shrimp, even though I'm allergic to it. Mm. Uh, bread, uh, wheat bread. Mm. Actually, no, pan sobao, which is like soft bread. You know what I mean? Spice, adobo. Uh, fish, uh, uh, fuck. fried fish from Dominican Republic. There you go. That's it. Good job. What, is that? what was the fish? It's chillo. What's it fried? Is there? It's fried. It's a uh, snap with the red snapper. Oh. Yeah. 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 Is there some kind of like sauce or something on the side with it? Uh, uh no. Um, they. You know how they they see they deep fry it. They yeah. season the top. They cut it in between and they stuff seasoning within inside the fish. Whoa. So it's the north. I think it's called the northeast red snapper, and okay. it's so. Good. It sounds and good. if you go to the the beaches in Dominican Republic, that's what you order. Okay. It's just yeah. like a staple. That's the staple. Amazing. And you get it with some batata, which is sweet potato. Yo, for real, yo. A sweet and salty. Yo, I take this dude to Dominican Republic. He's gonna love it. I would love that. So let's, let's count how many go. you got. Let's go right now. Just leave. Okay, perfect. Let's go on a plane right now. Um. Okay. So we got one, Hello. two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 11, 12. Definitely not. That's Definitely. like middle of the road, I would say. We've uh, had yeah. some worse ones, let's, let's, I'll be honest. But um, you, you put pressure on me. That's all right. <laughs> it's, it's all for fun. But yeah. see, the whole point, like, you know, it's fun to win or lose or whatever, but what's really important is that we kind of got to learn a little bit about you because, like, okay. you wouldn't have mentioned the fish before that, okay. would you, right? Without that. So perfect. Good job. Oh, also, I forgot. Let's get you oh, some wine. Oh, yes. Yes. Now you're talking my language. Perfect. Say when. Went all the way up. Uh, 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 there we go. <laughs> <laughs> there we go. <laughs> Cheers. Salud. Salud. To your success. Thank you. And to yours as well, my friend. This um, is a good ass wine, for real. Thank you. You know, Yo, I try. I know you what got I'm good, doing. You, you got good taste. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm sorry, I got all of it. No, it's fine. I have plenty of wine, trust me. And also, it'll go really good with the food later too, which is great. And now next, we're gonna kind of continue to get to know you a little bit more and um, ask you some questions from social media. Okay. okay. Okay, luckily enough, one of the first questions we, that we got on social media is, does Gadiel have any siblings? I do. Let's, let's rave about your sister. 
my sister, my sister's here. I love her to death, you know. She's uh, the only one that's my mother and father as well. She's just like me. She acts like me. She talks, she laughs like me. So it's just, it's crazy to have somebody else that's just like me. Uh, I love all my sisters and brothers. I have nine. Whoa. Nine, yep. My family looks fucking. <laughs> that's right, son. Dominicans fuck a lot. Okay. And another person from YouTube asked, uh, how has growing up with sisters influenced the way you treat women? Because you have all the sisters, right? Uh, since I'm, yes, I have like five sisters, so I'm very protective of my sisters. So uh, when I treat, when I, when I interact with women, I always have a different perspective because I want my, I talk, I talk to my sisters every day. Yeah. So I'm very protective over my sisters. So if a man treats them a certain way, I'm very pro woman, I'm pro anything. You know, pro LGBT because mm -hmm. my sister is the one that got me into that because I'm, and I fight for my sister. I'm a sister's keeper, so the way I treat uh, women is the way I would love my sisters to be treated. Very respectful, yeah. respected, uh, uh, you know, and also like knowing that they have their own power. You know, yeah. I grew up in a household where women are strong. Yeah. You know, uh, we have problems with being vulnerable. Yes, because we grew up uh, in a Latin household where it was hard to be vulnerable. Yeah. But we, we working on it every single day. Yeah. Okay. What would you say, like, when it comes like vulnerability? Like, what are the things that maybe you're most vulnerable about? Like, what are those like things you're trying to get through? Uh, being more open. Mm. You know, like, uh, I want to be able to cry in front of people. I don't cry. Mm. I I don't. I'd be like, I'd be like, damn, that was emotional. I almost cried. Oh, you see one tear, like, oh, that's it, and then I stop. Mm. So I would love to be able to have the freedom to be like, okay, be emotional in front of somebody. Yeah. You know? Are you like, are you afraid that you'd be a judge, or what are you afraid of? I don't know what it is. Yeah. I don't know. I just stop myself. Like th when I was a kid, uh, I would cry, and yeah. my father was like, "Men don't cry." Yeah. And then you ever see me cry? I was like, "No." Yeah, when you drunk, <laughs> you just sit there and you cry, right? But I remember when I was a kid, he told me that he's like, "You never seen your master Shion crying because Shion I used to do karate too." Another fun fact. Whoa. Like, right? But he was like, if he cries, he goes into the bathroom, slam himself against the wall, and do whatever you gotta do. But outside, nobody will ever see him cry. You never see me cry and stuff like that. And he was like, men don't cry. So when wow. he instilled that in me, yeah. so I was like, and my mom is a tough one too. So she yeah. hardly cries too. You know, how many times have you seen mom cry? Barely. Yeah. Barely. Yeah. Wow. Well, see, I think it's really interesting because all the times when it comes to like conversations of like, I mean, we're kind of getting off topic, but I love it, so it's fine. Um, you know, when it comes to, like like feminism and mm -hmm. like you know, equal rights, sometimes we always, you know, because it's important to like build women up. But at the same time men are kind of kept in a prison of like mm -hmm. their own emotions, mm -hmm. right? Emotions, yeah. And it's, I think it's not until, like feminism is everyone being equal, so it's not until men are able to feel vulnerable and able to express their emotions, yeah. you know, um, healthily uh, and like happily and like truthfully that are we really both equal because, That's true. you know, we don't, we don't want to only build women up so that, and then men still be like trapped in, in all their own feelings, you know, yeah, I think yeah. it's important to, um, yeah, be vulnerable. And I think it's hard because we a lot of us are raised that way. You know, yeah. you, you can't cry, you can't be feminine, yeah. you can't like what girls like, you yeah. can't show kindness. Like even that, sometimes people are like you have to always be stone faced. Stone faced, yeah. yeah. And then we also we grew up in uh, in an area that when you walked on the street, people are looking at you, mm. and so you have to walk a certain way. You have to demand a certain type of respect and attention so people could respect you in these streets. So they want to fuck with you. Yeah. They see you crying, they right away. They want. They're like, oh, this guy's weak. Yeah. Or they'll go on, go in and attack you. So it's like it showed. It was like these neighborhoods were a, a hub of like it showed. It, it trained you to show no weakness. Am I right, Nana? Yeah, you're right. She's wow. right there. She could test for me. Uh, do you want to come in and like, say hi? Say hi. Sure. This is his sister. <laughs> She's wonderful. Already right. She's nice to meet you. Hi. hi. That's my life right there. <laughs> yeah. You know what I mean? I think. Um, him as an adult, he's more em empathetic. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Yeah, I see that. What, yeah. Was he like a hard kid? Yeah. Yeah. I was like trained always every day. I woke up at the jumpy jacks. I run outside at five o'clock in the morning. I was in boxing back in the day. I won third place in the Junior Olympics. That's another thing you didn't know about me. <laughs> well, one thing I, yeah. now I'm curious about is like since your sister said that you've kind of become more empathetic as you've gotten older. Do you think that's probably been because like maybe for the last three years you've worked with a lot of people that maybe are different than you and maybe are a lot more open yeah, and vulnerable? Because yeah. obviously maybe it's easier for you to be vulnerable at BuzzFeed than it would be at like in the Navy. 
right? Uh, actually, Buzz, BuzzFeed was uh, a catalyst to understand feminism and, and political correctness a lot more. When I stepped into BuzzFeed, I was like, everybody's sensitive. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They understand? And I didn't understand uh, the other side but I, then afterwards when I got to know everybody yeah. I got to know a whole lot there's a lot of things about women that didn't know women went through yeah. and I learned that through BuzzFeed yeah. you know so I feel like working in that environment yes opened me up and wanted to become more vulnerable understanding the other side and masculinity they talk about masculinity and femininity all the time yeah. and being gender neutral I didn't know anything about that yeah. you know trans uh, uh, trans folks yeah. you know I did not know their struggles why what is that yeah. makes sense now yeah. before I was like I don't get it I don't care about no damn bathroom now I'm like yo you, you use whatever bathroom you want like and now I'm like cheering like I'm understanding you yeah, know yeah, yeah. and it, of course you know the environment LA the progressive movement and and you know the, everybody that uh, in a you know at BuzzFeed really opened up my eyes to this new world yeah and now I understand it I was able to learn because of the space yeah you know well, that's nice yeah and also I feel like um, I think it, that's a good first step of you even um, being vulnerable in accepting that because I yeah. think you could have come and you could have never changed you could have been yeah. like I don't want to change and the, f the fact that you want to be vulnerable is like in itself really special and the fact that she's seen growth I mean it just means that you're going to keep growing which, yeah, is, that just, which is nice yeah the, I, I have to th give thanks to my team especially Curdy Curdy will be like we don't say that yeah. you know uh, Maya will always be like Garia we don't say that out here that's not, not something you say this is why you don't say this yeah. and Curdy was very patient a lot of people would, like signed me off and canceled me so quick but Curdy was the only one that was like, Gary, can you come over here? You don't say these things because this is why you don't say it because it's offensive, blah, blah, blah. Yeah. And I'm like, oh, okay, now I get it, yeah. you know? And also one thing I want to say is, um, and I've said it a million times before, of all of BuzzFeed's like sub channels and everything, Paralike is my favorite because you guys have the funniest sketches. Thank it's like, you. I think some of the best content. And that's why I think almost all of you have been on here, like uh, Maya, Julissa, Curly and you, so mm -hmm. I mean, most of the main ones at least. You should have got me first. I, I well, thought we had a special bond, though. We do, we do. I just, I think, um, Jaleesa, so, she was like, you know, I don't want to get into like when she had to leave and everything, but we, I had like, there were certain schedules, but I'm glad you're here now. Of course. Yeah, yeah. Because I'm taking all your wine. Yes. It's all for you, my friend. This is good ass wine, man. Wow. Where you got it at? My rule for wine is never under ten dollars because that's like when they're gonna like go really 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 sugary and, and other great. Yeah, yeah. but um if you're going super super high it's also like you don't need that you don't yeah, need yeah. to have fancy wine because it's just like the brand name you're paying yeah. for so like i like a good middle of the range and you want to so this is like you said you like a red blend right yeah, which yeah. is really good yeah but when you have like one type of grape cabernet sauvignon right like it's um a more pronounced singular flavor damn y'all were listening <laughs> there's some shit right now the interview. A little bit of wine knowledge. Wine knowledge. Um, I didn't okay. know none of that shit. Uh, let's do one more, one last question. forget all that shit tomorrow. Yeah. <laughs> honest, honestly, I lost a lot of what I learned in culinary school. Yeah. It just goes. Um, but we since we just did talk about Paralike, what's your favorite character you've played on Paralike? Because you've done a lot of them. I've done a lot of them. I think of being a uh, Latino dad. I love yeah. being a Latino dad. It, it, people see me as the dad of the team. Yeah. Uh, they're like, yeah, you're such a dad. And plus, I got the dad bod, so I'm there. You know what I'm saying? I'm ready. I'm also ready to be a dad, so any candidates out there. <laughs> <laughs> Guys, if you want to find a man, have a good baby, got to yell your guy. Yeah, I'm buying real estate. I got medical insurance. I got a retirement fund. I got everything. Dental plan. Whatever you need, girl. He's prepared. Our kids will go to college for free. You saw that? That's, a, that's a very important, y'all. Yeah. Student debt. Oh, my God. Don't even get me That's started. That's a win. Yeah. They, they're going to be short, though. <laughs> Fun size. Fun size. Ooh, yep. They're going to be in front of the line in school. <laughs> and they, all the class pictures, they're right up front. They're right in front. They hold the sign. That's the good part. Yeah. yeah. Yep. And now it's time for the food. Are you ready? Oh, 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 oh. <laughs> so basically, we have to warm it up. But oh, yes. um, when I serve it to you, right, I'm like dishing the food for you. So this segment is called Dream Dish. So while I'm dishing the food, you're going to dish for us, um, like either a secret that you've never told anyone before, okay, or something that the world should know. So you think on that. I'll be right back. Okay. A secret that I never told anybody. Oh my god. Oh my god. So here's the food. You don't have to do that kind of. Oh my god. Here is the pastelone. Oh yeah. 
We have three slices, because I, I knew you probably would want a lot. And we have some um, fried plantains, and we have some rice, and just like a little bit of a salad on the side if you want some veggies. I could do that. You know, I hardly do salad, but woo! Here, <laughs> Look at her. <laughs> I wish you could just pants us here. <laughs> Look. You know me. <laughs> Okay, and here's some rice. So while I'm, while I'm dishing the food for you, Gadio, you have to tell us what's your um, your secret you're gonna dish for us. All right, so I've been crazy. I'm, I'm, I love them, but I love Latin music. But there's this one guy that nobody pays attention to, I feel like, okay. and he doesn't get like the mainstream credit, but he's so great, such a great rapper. Um, uh, I'm I'm fascinated by him. I love his music. He's dark like me. He's Dominican, but like. And his name is Musicologo El Libro, you know, so I don't know how to say that in English. But yeah, Musicolo El, El Libro, great, great underground artist. Okay. He's just like, but he doesn't get the credit he deserves. Can we find his music on like iTunes or Spotify or Yeah, like you that? can find okay. his music on iTunes Perfect. or Spotify. If you look, for, look him up, listen to Tea Chan or Limonada Coco Remix. Oh, yeah. wow. I, I just, I gave you guys a gift right now. Enjoy it. Listen to this man. This guy is great. I go on stage. Every time I go on stage, actually, I I listen to uh, Luis Monada Coco. Like, okay. I started it within eight seconds, so I just listen to that. Ooh. Let's see. Let's see how good Matt did. We'll see. How do you learn how to do this? What? Pinterest? Pinterest? Um, no. Um, different websites online. And then also, do you remember Keanu? Keanu from Tasty? Yeah, yeah, yeah. She did um, a six plantain recipe video for Tasty and one of her friends who's Dominican came in and made Peslon. So I kind of based off but of that. They should have told me. True. Nobody told me that. Wow. It's good. It's hitting the right spots? It's really the right spot. I, I need it. That's what I need it. Mm, this is on point. Now growing up, did your mm. mom make it? Did your family make it? Did you make it? How did you have it growing up? I don't think mom ever made Pastelon. Mm. So usually at parties, Dominican parties, somebody will bring a big ass Pastelon. And it'll be, it's the best thing ever. It's like heaven on earth, you know? The sweetness on top, the the meat in the middle is like, it's like eating lasagna, but you're eating platano, a platano lasagna. Yeah, yeah. You know? Mm. So, um, yeah, mostly at parties. Every time we go to a party, I have pasta alone. But the thing is, my mom never made it. So every time I go home, I don't think my mom, I don't think my mom knows how to make it. You think she knows how to make it? But... It's, I don't know. It's hard to find pastelon. That's one. Even in New York, it's hard to find pastelon. It's not like they have it in a lot of places. Mm. The only place I try pastelon are in like in parties, like family parties. Mm. And it's some that do. So it's like, it's not every day I get to eat this. Gotcha. I don't know how to make it. I'll be honest with you. I never made it. Well, when the video is done, I'll yeah. send it to you. Well, this is delicious though. Mmm. Let's go more into some of your backstory. So you said you got into the Navy to kind of like kind of escape where you were. Yeah. Because it was hard for you in New York and all that kind of stuff. What are some of the best lessons you've learned in the Navy? Um, wow. Uh, what I learned in the Navy is I was able to, to travel the world, see different cultures. I got to see t Singapore. At a young age, I, I saw 12 different countries. Whoa. So I think that was really cool. I, I was able to have thick skin. You know, like that's how my, you know, in, in the military we talk a lot of shit. Yeah. We joke around, we, we play around with each other, and we we like we have thick skin because we're able like to joke on each other. That's how I, every time somebody makes fun of me, I'm able to laugh. Yeah. And in the military, we drink and we talk shit. That's what we do. <laughs> that's all we what do. What a great pastime. Yeah. So I'm I'm lucky that at a young age I was able to see twelve different countries, experience different cultures, different languages. Uh, it's just like that's what I learned from the Navy. I know I know a lot about Japan. I know the food that is in China. Mm. You know, I ate, uh, food that is different in Hong Kong than there is in China. You know, Singapore, Malaysia, even going to Hawaii. Hawaii, even though it's the same country as ours, but it's still different. It's a different style. It's a different culture. Yeah. Seen that. How long were you in every of the countries? Well, uh, we were there for a short amount of time, even though it was like three to four days, sometimes okay. a week. Uh, but either way, it's enough. Yeah, it's like a very immersive. It's very immersive. It's enough to go out there, have fun, party. Yeah. And I also learned that people dance salsa all over the world, y'all. 
That's right, son. So you could fit in anywhere. Yeah, I was dancing salsa all over the damn place. I mean, I'm sure a lot of these people who are watching have already follow you on Instagram, but you will see him dancing and having a ball all the time on all there. The time. I'm living my best life, son. Yes. <laughs> okay, but then, so like, what were some of the hardest moments for you when you were still in the Navy? Like, I'm sure oh. there must have been like some crazy days. Yeah, working 20 hours a day. Oh, man. We worked 20 hours a day. We, we worked in the cold. Uh, I was one of the first responders in the tsunami that happened in Japan. It oh. was freezing, freezing cold when we got there. It was ridiculous. Mm. And it was scary to know that there's victims out there in the freezing cold, you know? Um, uh, working 20 hours a day is exhausting. Yeah. You know, it takes a lot on your body. That's why I'm going to have bad knees. And um, another hard thing, I would say, I think that I would say that's it. Okay. You know? Uh, not being able to see my family, my my sister, unfortunately, one of my sisters passed away, and it was hard to get there on time, because I was in Thailand, mm. you know. Wow. So um, just seeing family when family emergency is hard to like leave, and be there on time. It was weird. It was a weird feeling because we, I was like, yeah, Thailand, and then I found then I found out about you know our, our sister and that we had to fly out and she's doing really bad. So now I had to fly out of Thailand, stay in Thailand. I had to go to, Bang actually I was in Phuket and I had a flight to Bangkok all by myself. So I didn't know nobody. Oh shoot. So I was walking around Bangkok for a day by myself, not knowing the language, not knowing anything. And Cause I had a way to get a passport, an American passport. Oh my God. So when they got me- lines I'm assuming and like oh, bureaucracy. Oh my God. Yeah, I can't even- But imagine. they did the whole process for me, the American embassy, they did help me out. Okay. But when I, I was walking out and about, and you see people looking at me like, are you lost? You know, <laughs> like, yeah. yeah. Oh. But then, uh, no, I made it back. I flew back. Um, my friend Jose helped me out. He's mm -hmm. running for Congress now. Yeah. Well, yeah. Here in town or where? In, in San Diego. Oh, working, wow. Running for Congress. He's a progressive. Love you, Jose. Shout out. Show him some love. Um, and so then after you, uh, the Navy, you started stand-up comedy. What are some of like the best lessons, the, like the craziest stories from the stand-up comedy world? Cause you're, you're still doing it. I've, I've seen like I clips, and I know you like post them now and again, and that's yeah. always great. I do. I, I don't really post it on my Instagram because I don't like people that know me or fans of mine is coming to see a show and them laughing because they like me. Got it. You know. You want it to be real. Yeah, I like it to be real. So I do a lot of bar shows, like rugged places, and I love that. I love going up first. I like biting the bullet. I like nobody knowing me. You know what I mean? Because I feel like when I get them to laugh there, I'm like, okay, this shit was actually really funny. Right. You know, I don't want to be like this big influencer guy that does tours and right. does stand up and it's not funny. Right. Makes sense. So, um, comedians are the toughest people I know. Yeah. You, know, you, have, you have to be a little mentally crazy to be a comedian, a stand up comedian. You have to go on stage even when you don't want to. Right, right, right. You could have a bad day. Mm -hmm. Something happened with your family. And you have to step up in front of a stage and make people laugh. No matter what. Even if you don't feel like it, you don't have the energy to. Yeah. You have to go up there to make a stranger laugh that probably don't even like you. Yeah. Did you have like a really bad day where you were on stage and like... Everybody does. And yeah. whoever says they don't... They're, they're not really comedians. Right, you know right, what I mean? Right, right, yeah. I, I feel like everybody has had a bad day. You need to bomb. Yeah. You need to bomb to get better. Yeah. That's how you know a joke does not work. Mm -hmm. You know? Uh, but I love, I love stand-up. I hate it when I'm going to go and do it. But when I do it and I get off that stage, I'm like, this is the best feeling in the world. Yeah. There's no quitting. There's no... This, this is, this is going to stop one day. No, it's never going to stop. I'm hooked. Yeah. It's a drug. Yeah, I bet like it feels like when the whole room just like roars with oh laughter, I bet it's good. It's the best feeling mm. ever. And you and then you know that you created this. Yeah. You're commanding attention to a room. You're the leader of this room. Mm -hmm. And then people are roaring, laughing because you control that you made that happen. I think that's the most beautiful thing. But you have to be kind of semi-crazy because you have to go on stage up to places where people don't like you. Yeah. You have to bomb over and fail over and over and eat shit. You're literally driving hours to eat shit and yeah. drive back and go home and go to sleep. So that's like a lot of uh, comedians suffer from depression because you have to be a special kind of person to do yeah. this type of lifestyle. And it's funny because I've also found like a lot of some people that are really funny, like, you know, had a hard childhood or yeah. like, suffered through depression, like you said. And I think the reason why they cope with that through laughter is because not only are they trying to make themselves feel better and, and, mm -hmm. and have more enjoyment, they're trying to make everyone else feel really happy too. Because mm -hmm. they want to make themselves and other people feel better than how they're feeling. Yeah. Which I think is really like noble and, you know, admirable. Admirable at the same time. Yeah. 
every community I talk to, they're like, we don't know what we're doing. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> we, we don't know. We think about quitting all the time. But we still do it. There's no going back. Yeah. That's it. Uh, have you met, like, I'm sure you've met, like, a lot of, like, great, like, people from mm -hmm. uh, comedians or uh, from the com comedy world. Do you have, like, any, like, inspirations in that field? Uh, my inspiration is, of course, the top dogs, which is Richard Pryor. Mm. Um, Richard Pryor, uh, Chris Rock, Kevin Hart, Dave Chappelle, because those are old school guys. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and there's a lot of great women comics. Aida Rodriguez, I'm a, uh, like, she's my idol mentor. Like, she's a hero to me. Uh, we don't give enough credit to women comics. Yeah. And women comics are dope out as fuck. Yeah. Like, Ali Wong. Oh. Well, Ali Wong is one of the best female comics out there yeah. like both, both of her specials were great she's a veteran in the game she knows that she's funny like she understands her voice and her comedy like you know and Aida Rodriguez please look up Aida Rodriguez she's amazing okay I'm also uh, I go on stage a lot with Michelle Stevenson she's you know half German half uh, Chilena okay cool so she's amazing also a great comic she's gonna be great in the future trust me Every time I go on stage, every time I go do a show, I'm there. I'm with Michelle. Mm. Okay, I'm yeah. Michelle. She's like your comedy like partner almost. My innocent. comedy partner. Love it. Yeah, my partner in crime. Mm. She's like a hustler. She's oh. a straight up hustler. Don't, uh, those are the best people. People that work hard, work don't hard. give up. Right? You, yeah. just, you gotta love those people. Also, you, uh, actually, there's also like this comedian that's also been having my back and mentoring me. Not see so, and if we don't show. Uh, there's not a lot of uh, gay comedians out there too stand-up comics yeah right and it's hard to be uh, uh and i'm not speaking for him but i know like just the quote the latino culture but being latino and gay you oh, know man. just being it just you have that extra pressure but he's also been a person that's been mentoring me you know every time i go on stage he, he pulls me off off to the side he goes like listen you need to work on this you need to work on that why he didn't go there he chooses my ass when he needs to chew my ass and then and then i take it you know what i'm saying yeah you need to have people like that on your corner that, that are rooting for you and believe in you. So, yeah. Narcissus is another one that I want to okay. shout out to. Amazing. Well, yeah, I, I, um, some of those I already know, some of them I don't know, but I love stand-up comedy too, yeah. so I'm going to look all these up. Okay. Listen to it while I cook. That's my favorite thing, listening to podcasts no or like comedy stuff while I'm cooking. Yeah, I love it. Have you thought about doing stand-up yourself? Um, I have thought about it. I know I love to watch improv a lot, and I wanna. Mm -hmm. I know like if I ever have money to burn, which I do not have now, mm -hmm. but eventually I want to like do like UCB classes. I would mm -hmm. love to do that, and um, maybe start there first, where mm -hmm. I'm like learning, and then try stand up comedy. But I think I would love it eventually, but I'm not at that point. Yet. Uh, yeah, have fun with it. Yeah, like, I feel like if you have the itch, yeah, scratch it. Yeah. <laughs> right? Mm -hmm. You know, give it a try sometime. Yeah. It's something that you want to do. Yeah. What, what do you see yourself doing after this? Like After this? Or? Yeah. Oh, besides this? Um, well, so my passion has always been food, but um, for the longest time I've worked in restaurants, right? And then I went to Tasty. And so now I know about more about marketing and business and like media, which I love. Yeah. But like, I kind of always want to mix them. So like my end goal is to own restaurants and then also to um, like have my own little production company where mm -hmm. I can one, market my own restaurants, like for like, you know, photos and videos and stuff. But also I, I love storytelling and like, um, like narrative film and TV and stuff. So I want to like create TV shows and movies about um, like people that work in food, especially mm -hmm. like women and queer people in mm -hmm. food. And um, just like, you know, like a, f um, a drama about like food lobbyists in DC or okay. like, a, a, like a family on a Midwestern farm in yeah. the middle of the country, right? right? A comedy maybe. And like, I want to be able to like mix both the media and mm -hmm. like storytelling comedy um, with like real food where like I give you a burger, you give me $10. Like both those okay. types of like business transaction. And uh, yeah, so after this, um, my goal is to just kind of keep creating. I'm like at a point where I'm like testing things right yeah, now. Yeah, like what yeah. works, what doesn't work. Yeah, yeah. And the goal is to eventually be able to create some kind of food TV show and um, be able to start telling stories about people in food. Like, that's important to me. Yo, I wish you the best of luck. I know you could do it. You, you and I both know like we, I feel like you and I have like a little push, a head start, a head, we're ahead of the game. Yeah. Because there's things that we know about the internet that the average man does not know. Yeah, very true. You know, so I feel like you're ahead of the game. You, you, you're going to be successful at everything you do. You have a good heart, big heart. And then you're like, you're such a good person, you know. Thank you. So that's, a, that's one of the main reasons I'm here because we, I know who you are. 
Thank you. You know, so I'm here for you. Whatever you need, you're going to start that rep- restaurant out. You need some, somebody to push for that shit. I'm there. And then you come and you get free I'll food. I'll be there. You get free food. A word? Definitely I'll be there. Definitely. Um, okay, wait. So now you asked me, but now so like, now I know obviously you're like, obviously you're comfortable at BuzzFeed. You're doing great there. And you're doing your stand-up comedy gig. But like, what are your like next steps? Like, what are you hoping for? The, the, the next step is to start my own production company. Yes. With my sister. And, uh, you know, be co-owners of it. And uh, you know, uh, and then start writing movies, creating, producing movies. Uh, right now, we we will we need to focus on social media, yeah. And, and having that engagement with our audience and producing short little films for our yeah. own selves. But I uh, I want a Netflix special though. Yes. I, I want a dope ass Netflix special. I want to see somebody. I want somebody to see a Dominican out there. I want Dominicans yes. to be like, oh my God, there's a Dominican with a Netflix special. You know. Yeah. You know, and uh, I just want the next generation to feel inspired. You know, I want my family to feel inspired, and you know, and that's the next step for me. Well, you already have an in with Julissa at Netflix. I, I know, I know, I know. She better hook me up. Yeah. Julissa, I told her, Julissa promised me. She's like, at the end, I'm gonna throw that rope back. I'm like, you better throw that rope back. Remember, I've been there for you. <laughs> that's my homie, Julissa. Oh my, my god, homie I'm so did. excited when that show comes out. Yeah, I actually she brought me on set. Tell she brought, us everything. She brought me on set. She was like, let me... And I was like, I just want to see you do your thing. I just yeah. want to see you and your element because you earned this shit. Yeah. Before Julissa started at BuzzFeed, I remember I pulled her off to the side. Now, I said, Julissa, let me tell you one thing. You're super talented. Yeah. And I don't know that somebody hasn't discovered you. Yeah, I know. And it's I'm like... Bonkers. And I was like, you're going to be big in the future. Trust me because you have that talent. Yeah. I told her straight up like that. Yeah. And we didn't even know each other like that. We just did one video together at that time. And was just driving home. She was driving in my car. My, my little old Acura. And like, yo, you're going to be big. I tell you, you're going to be big. I didn't even know her like that. Yeah. And then we became really good friends. You know, I'm, I've always been rooting for her from the very beginning. Yeah. You know, you know that you always got to help your people out. You yeah. know what I mean? Like, uh, uh, once we um, once we met, we just hit it off. Yeah. You know? She's one of those people that just, like, fills up a room with her whole personality. Oh, yeah. You know? Yeah. yeah. The entertainment business is a tricky thing because... We meet a lot of people that will root for us, yeah. and and really inside they feel a little jealousy. Right. A lot of times, I'm pretty sure you've seen it around yeah. a lot, and and you know I always wanted for her. I wanted always to protect her from it. I can't do that, but I was like, you know, that's like I feel like that's family. She reminds yeah. me of home. Yeah, yeah. You know, so um, I always want to make sure that she knows that she's loved, and that she has this support no matter what. That yeah. wants her to win no matter what. So uh, my goal as her really close friend is to keep her focused on her craft. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. So does she, yeah. does she when she has like going through like moments of like struggle or strife, does she like text you and be like, Gadia, like I need like some clarification on my life? Or, we talk a lot. We talk yeah. a lot. A lot of times she's she's so strong. She's a strong woman. Yeah. I know that she sometimes feels a certain type of way, but she would never voice it to me because I, I grew up with Dominican women, so I know how she is. Yeah. So sometimes I send a text. Uh, I make sure like she's very like go 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 and so every time she wins or something I'm like we gotta have to celebrate that shit yeah oh you got Netflix we gonna go celebrate that shit drinks on me drinks is on me yeah. I don't give a fuck don't yeah. tell me shit don't tell me something else the, we, the, today is your day yeah you know so um, I, my that's what you need you need friends to do that for you yeah you know you need people to be like yo you celebrate your win. This yeah. is a win. Right now, you have your own show. This is yours. Dinner Views is yours. Nobody could take that shit away from you. You got to celebrate that. I know? needed to hear that because even though I'm having a lot of fun, like it's a lot of hard work and sometimes I'm just like, I need a nap. So, yeah. like, I, I thank you. Yeah, take time. Take time to enjoy <sighs> this. Yeah, I want you to win. Because, yo, man, if yeah. you win, I win too. Right. You know, that's I, that's my experience of things. Yeah. You know. All, you, and, yeah, you were saying with like, the jealousy, like, it's like stupid because... Yeah. If you have friends that do well, like all, um, uh, what is it, a high tide raises all ships. Like, yeah. you know, we all do better. If we, as long as, and there's, someone never takes your spot. There's yeah. always more spots. Thank you. Yeah. And I feel like uh, we live in such a social media world yeah. that, and that's how come I, I haven't been posting too much because I'm noticing a lot of influencers have this God complex. Oh, mm, okay. And so they're like, why not me? It should be me. So, yeah. so if you win, they're, they'll be like, and they'll be like, no, nah, I'm not happy for you, you know, because there's this God complex, yeah. Yeah. you know, and that's going to put it aside. And um, 
the thing is people forget they, they're socially unaware that yeah. they'll blatantly tell you out loud that they hate on somebody else wow yeah so i've seen it plenty of times like oh i'm hating on i'm i feel a type of way why this person win and when i they, that could have been me that should have been me yeah. and they'll blatantly speak this out loud but because they don't have these social skills no more because everything is social media, me, 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 my following, my yeah, following, yeah, yeah, my yeah. following. And they don't realize that, like, who's listening who's or, like, listening? who they're talking about, yeah. like, their, their old friend, You're just, like, ruining your that friend, relationship. Your yeah. friend, you know, so, wow. you know, sometimes I take a break, I'm like, all right, I'm good. Yeah, sometimes yeah. you seem to, like, take a nap, go mm -hmm. on a vacation, something else, you know. You win. The, your friend wins, you win. Yeah. You know, if Julissa wins, she's going to throw the rope back. She's going to, I'm going to win later. Yeah. And, man, I'm going to do good. And guess what? Mm -hmm. Whenever she fucking needs me, I'm going to be there. She's going to win. I'm going to always look out for her. Yeah. Even with my sister. My sister wins, I win. Yeah. You know? So, anyway, you win, I win. You, you, you open up your we restaurant. We all win. Yeah. I, I'm pushing your restaurant. Yeah. This shit got to be good. Yeah. Because this shit is trash. I'm like, God damn, you go, I put my name out there for your ass. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I better have a rough night on Johnny Up Watch. <laughs> you know, but you win, I'm like, yo, yeah. Matthew's winning. You yeah. know, like, always support your friend. Always elevate, yeah. you know? So, um, I was reading something, and yeah. it was talking about human beings. Okay. You know, I always, uh, I'm very picky who I surround myself with. Okay. I'm always big on, on who's going to be my closest friends. And the reason why is... We're a monolith, uh, not a monolith. We 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 have this thing called homeostasis. Yeah, makes sense. Mm -hmm. So the closest people that are with us, we we adapt their habits. The mm -hmm. closest friends that I have is you know Andy. This is a guy that, that he does real estate. Another guy, my barber, mm -hmm. that he owns his own business, mm -hmm. and these guys are business oriented. They're doing stuff for their life. Yeah. That affects me. Mm -hmm. They win, I win, yeah. because I want to surround myself with somebody that's better than me. Yeah, I don't know what the statement is, but like people always say like. Like the five people yeah. that you're closest with are like who shaped you the most. Exactly. Yes. That's exactly what yeah. it is. Yeah. So the closest five people there, they they will affect your life and how you are. So yeah. you surround yourself with people that are better than you, you're gonna be a better person. Yeah. It's just called homeostasis. Yeah. If, it, if I wasn't around with my best friend Andy, yeah. I wouldn't be buying a duplex right now and thinking about finances or thinking that I could have, be an owner of yeah. a, my own production company. Yeah. You know, so that your friends influence you. Yeah. You know, so I want to be that for the world. I also want to be that for you if I can. You know what I mean? So, I love you, man. And also, and, and on the flip side, it's also really important because, like, have you had, like, negative people in your life who, like, yeah. drain you and, like, are, you know, take things out? And sometimes, like, I think, like, Oprah always says it, is, like, if people, like, are tearing you down, you know, you have to, like, sell, have enough pride in yourself and love for yourself to be able to, like, sometimes cut people out who are hard on you to be able to focus on growing yourself. I, I usually, uh, a lot of times people attract that. Yeah. You know, so I don't have that in my okay, life. Good. I, I, immediately when I see somebody that's full of drama or something going, or posting something dramatic always online yeah. or, or every time I'm with them, they're having a problem, even their significant other or somebody, they're talking shit about somebody. I, I, I'm, I cut myself off from it. Somebody's talking bad about somebody else, guess what? I don't talk about it. So right now we are kind of like reaching the end, right, of the interview. Um, but one thing I like to do is this is the interview's guest book, right? Mm -hmm. So everyone like signs their name and we write how many they did for the game, right? And then they ask the next guest a question, okay? So Rie was my last guest. So she has a question oh, for you. Oh, I Rie. Rie was here. Yeah. I love her. Um, okay, so Rie asks you, um, she says, I always ask this question as an icebreaker, but where is your favorite restaurant in L.A.? Where would you eat at if you were leaving L.A. tomorrow? P.S. You look like a coconut. Apparently, she said you would know that. <laughs> she knew I was coming. Okay. Yeah, yeah. What, what, was, did, what did, was the story? I did a video on a man bun video. Oh. And, I, and I had like a, 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 a man bun, whatever. Yeah. And then uh, she said my hair looked like a coconut. <laughs> And it did. I was like, I don't know. I would take that as a compliment. <laughs> I think when you posted that, I like, I hardcore laughed because yeah. I always think it's funny when, when guys have man buns. Cause like, you know, more power to them. Like it was yeah, a great yeah. video, but like in my mind, all I can picture with when a guy's man bun is like them walking away and it, it like bouncing. That's all I can picture. <laughs> and it makes me laugh. Um, if I was leaving late tomorrow, I won't be honest with you. I will go to a food truck. Okay. I will not, I'm, I don't, there's no restaurant in LA. I'm like, oh, I'm dying to go eat. Food there. trucks count. Okay, but triple threat truck. Okay, it's a Puerto Rican truck, and they have the, this thing called mofongo. Oh yes, Dominicans, Puerto Ricans, we both have yeah. it, but they have. 
<sighs> this is gonna be hard to say. It looks painful for you. It's hard to say, but they have the best mofongo I ever had in my life. Shit. Better than any mofongo I had in New York. Better than any mofongo I had in Miami. Better than any mofongo I had in Dominican Republic. And better than any mofongo I had in Puerto Rico. They have, I I would say they probably have the best mofongo I ever tasted. What makes it so good? Do you know, like what it's is it? so rich. Like the sauce, like is just perfect. Like okay. so, Triple Threat is the name. It's called Triple Threat Truck. Triple Threat Truck. Yeah. Where in town is it? Uh, they're all over the place. You okay. can see the schedule and stuff like that. Amazing. The best. Uh, uh, I'm not even exaggerating. Okay. We did a video on them, and we oh, did, yeah. I didn't know. I didn't know. I was excited because I see a Puerto Rican flag. I'm like, I'm going to eat food that's just like ours. And uh, when I went, I ate, I ate that. And I was like, damn, this is life amazing. changed. This was amazing. Yeah. Yeah. It's underrated. Well, now I have to go. So I, then what, can you, you, you can find out where they're going from like their Twitter or something? Or like oh, you go on the Instagram. You go okay. on the Instagram. But a lot of times they post the schedule on their website. Got it. So they're up and I believe they'll be in Glendale, sometimes in downtown LA. I don't know. But triple threat truck, I would say. Los Perfect. Angeles. You said Los Angeles. Yeah, yeah. But if I were to go to San Diego, El Salvadoreño, Salvadoran spot. Ooh. What do, you, what do you order there? Man, I get this thing called Casamiento. Okay. Which comes with chuleta. Chuleta is a pork chop. Mm. Uh, with a bone-in pork chop. Okay. Then everything you order from there is ready, is made at the moment. Ooh. It fresh. takes a Yeah. It takes a while, but the whole food, uh, the whole plate tastes fresh. Got it. It's quality. The, mm. Even the owner talks to me. She was like, everything's about quality here. Well, I, I, uh, I'm dropping this. You better try that shit, yeah. They should get a notebook. Get a notebook. Sit down and I'm, like write all these. You have yeah. comedians you gotta listen to. We've got restaurants. Yeah. We've got so many things. Re8, shout out to you, girl. If there was a seven year old Gadiel or like a young Gadiel sitting here, A, what would he think of the food? Mm-hmm. And B, what would you tell your younger self? I'd be like, join the Navy earlier. Oh. Uh, I would tell him what I think about his, this food. Food, yeah. I would tell them. I would tell them it's gonna be delicious. Mm-hmm. You're gonna like it. The market's gonna crash, son. Buy property, son. Buy property. 2008. The market's gonna crash. Save up all your money. You're in the military. Buy a duplex right then and there. Just do that. Trust me, son. Trust me. I also love how you're talking right into the food, as if that is. I'm looking at your, myself like, yo, trust me, son. 2008. <laughs> the market's gonna crash. Make sure. <laughs> make sure you just get in there. It doesn't fucking matter. It doesn't matter. You see, that's what I would say. That's smart business advice. Like, I think I wish I could have done that when I was. Yeah, I know. <laughs> I would have been living le- rent free. Large. Yeah. Large. Rent free mm. with a duplex. I don't got to worry about anything. Damn, um, I fucked up. Oh, hey, but you're doing great now. What are you worrying about? Yeah. You're doing. You know what? You can't change life, can't change the past. All you can do is change your future. Boom. And the future ain't here yet, so all you got to worry about is right now. Exactly. But you know what? I just want to say is. Uh, thank you, Matthew, for having me here. Yeah. Show him love, support, Matthew. Uh, thank you for having. Me. I'm, I'm, I am so excited. Thank you for cooking for me yeah, too. Yeah, yeah. And anything you need, I'm here. I'm at your service. Like how we say, we damos la orden. Oh. So we're at your service. At your service. So anything you need, man, just call up. I'll be here for you. Thank you, Gadiel. And also, wait for you, bud. Um, for you, you have your own Instagram. You have your YouTube, right? Yeah. So, guys, if you are a big fan of Gaudio, which you probably already are, watch him on Paralike, on Instagram, and his YouTube, as well as you, once in a while. I mean, you don't want to have too many people go to your shows, you said. But no, when, no, come to my show. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If, I post, if I post on my Instagram, show up to those shows. Okay, yeah. Support him. He's hilarious. Also, give him your money. And then, when the Netflix special does come out, Make sure you watch that. Word. Yeah. Ooh. Um, and thanks for watching. Next week you'll see um, we'll have Katie Aubin here. And if you were, whether you were cooking while listening to this, or you were at work, or you were on the treadmill, maybe hoping that you were eating right now, I hope you enjoy the podcast. And we'll see you next week. Bye bye. Adios. Now let's all have some food, guys. I'm gonna put on my Insta story right now. That's let's do it. On my phone. Let's do it. <laughs>